Now this ransomware that you see on the desktop was responsible for attacking and successfully infecting one of the largest energy suppliers in a country. Let's see what happens when we run it. Typical terminal window and within moments we have a readme on the desktop and now our desktop background has been changed and they have links to their blog. Lynx blog, because this is of course Lynx ransomware. And if we visit the blog, we can see their hit list of companies they have successfully penetrated and their private data. As they call it, the category, this is proof of their success. If we go to the publication, we have screenshots of their private data, confidential, and they also publish the money they've made. And let's have a look at those figures. That's a lot of zeros at the end of that. And this is why cybercrime is relevant. As a user, you may say, well, I'm not getting infected so much these days. It doesn't affect me, but you're paying for it directly or indirectly. When a ransomware infiltrates an energy supply company, everyone could feel the effects. They did this in the United States with the colonial pipeline hack. People waiting in line all day, you know, to fuel their cars and go around. Imagine what would happen if they took down all of the electric car charging stations. Now, in this case, the SCADA systems, which are the critical low-level systems that deliver the power, were not affected. So it's not like the whole country had a power cut. But it goes to show that something like that is not out of the realm of possibility, especially as we modernize more systems, create software controls in Active Directory, and automate everything via the cloud. This is why cybersecurity is interesting, and this is why you should learn more about it. Because while you may not see this ransom screen yourself, if a company you use that delivers your energy, that provides you with internet, or your packages, or your health care, like the Synvenus incident, where medical records were erased, so maybe you went for a blood test, and then the ransomware encrypted the data. So now you have to go and do your blood test again, but you're due for surgery tomorrow. These things matter, and that is why I like looking into them and understanding what we can do to prevent this sort of behavior at the system level. So if we analyze this in any.run, shout out to them for sponsoring our channel. This is identified as Lynx ransomware. We'll talk a little bit more about this threat group and what they do. But the first thing we can notice is it's identified because it renames files like ransomware. And interestingly, when I executed this, we can play through the process and you will see that after some time, it opens up OneNote, executes a Windows network service, likely to communicate with its home infrastructure. This is what we like to call malware calling home, or these days, C2 communication or command and control. Now, of course, you can see a long list of communications here under connections and DNS requests. And here's a summary of all the techniques it uses. Very simple, execution, system services, checks the registry, gets information about the system, and then encrypts your data. Now, these are not naive threat actors. They're not teenagers. They even have their own press release saying that their core motivation is grounded in financial incentives with a clear intention to avoid undue harm to organizations. And you might be thinking, why are they making statements like this? Who cares? They're a criminal group. Their goal is to extort money. They're here to extort money. But you see, that's the thing. They need the organizations to trust them so that they pay. So it's a weird double standard where they have to establish that they have some ethical consideration because otherwise, why would they not just take the money and never decrypt the data? But at the same time, they're pursuing financial gain through crime. It's a very odd situation, which to be fair is true with a lot of crime. Now, they say they have a strict policy against targeting government institutions, hospitals, etc. But what we've seen in the past with threat actors is it's always a rolling window. They will make claims like this. But if you're doing crime anyway, why not take the next step? So don't be fooled. These are not moral people. But of course, it's in their best interest financially to convince you that they are. They say their model encourages dialogue and resolution rather than chaos and destruction. Because of course, if you think they're like Joker and their goal is to destroy your data anyway, why would you pay? So it's a really interesting double standard where these crime groups 
have to maintain a public reputation and appear to be acting as at least somewhat reliable and consistent. But it works. That's the scary thing. If you look at some of these income numbers, as you can see on the screen right now, this is no joke. And you can see why this is a growing problem and why so many ransomware groups keep popping up every year. Of course, if you want to protect yourself and make sure this doesn't happen to you or your organization, there are a couple of important things to keep in mind. One, no matter what you do, you are never going to be 100% immune. So it's important to have a plan, a recovery plan. What if one of your systems does get hacked? What if your employee leaks their credentials somewhere on the dark web and they get it? You need to be ready to deal with the problem at every stage and not just assume that it's not going to happen to you. Have robust protection on your system so that when something like this runs, it is actually detected and prevented from encrypting your data or sending any data out. If you want to learn more about what's good at that, watch the tests on this channel. We do a lot of those, but also have a robust backup policy that you test consistently. In a lot of situations, people have all of these boxes checked, but when something happens, they're ready on paper, but in practice, it's going to take too long. It's going to be very painful and it's going to cost a lot of money. And that's why you see the kind of numbers that you do on this website. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to give another shout out to Any.Run, which is a great malware analysis platform and sandbox. If you are interested in learning more about how to analyze malware yourself, you can simply sign up, submit a file, and they're going to give you the option to execute it in whatever virtual environment you choose, Windows 10, Windows 11, and even on Linux. Being a public sandbox, they also offer threat intel lookup and feeds. And here we can see the MITRE attack matrix for various threats around the world. You can check them out using the link in description. It is free for non-commercial use. So if you're just learning, you can try it out or you can get their hunter plan, which gives you a lot of advanced features. So try them out using the link in description. Thank you all so much for watching. Do like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to the PC Security channel. This is Leo, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.